Louis H. Sullivan was born on September 3, 1856. He was often referred to as the father of skyscrapers and fathers of modernism. In his lifetime, he designed about 100 buildings total. Growing up, he was a very impatient art student. He ended up leaving school but still had the intentions of becoming a very extraordinary architect. He ended up moving to Chicago where he was given a job in the architectural office in the Chicago school, William LeBaron Jenny. He was well known for his amazing buildings and some famous ones known in Chicago are the Auditorium Building and Theater, Art Institute of Chicago, and the Getty Tome, which was a memorial tome for a woman named Carrie Eliza Getty. Her husband, Henry Harrison, specifically asked Louis Sullivan to design a special tome just for his wife. One of the most accomplished buildings that people see as Sullivan's best artwork is the Carson Peary Scott Building. The building was the last large commercial he designed. He elaborated a highly artistic form and designed a crystal palace of glass and machinery and iron with ornaments designed to look like flowers and frost. His art proved that steel was able to be used as an architectural material. As Joseph Siri said, it is a crystal palace of glass and machinery and iron over raw. One of the most important aspects of the building was their show windows. The windows were framed in decorative iron. The use of the show window was a form of decorative art and for advertisement. Their merchandise would be arranged along the sidewalk windows to draw attention for shoppers to enter the store. Many don't know that the actual reason the windows were designed the way they are was the windows were supposed to be large in order to bring sunlight into the store. At the time the building was designed, some people still relied on sunlight to have light in their interior places. Before the store was the Carson Peary Scott building, it was an old slight singer and mayor building. But at that time, it did not contain electricity until a generating plant and electric lights were added when the building was remodeled again in the 1890s. So, so, since the windows in the building were big, this allowed sunlight to enter the building more and this helped the customers to be able to see their merchandise more clearly. When Sullivan was remodeling, he had planned that the building was wired for electricity. The source of the power was supposed to be coming from their own new power plant from that specific store. The main source of electricity came from arc lamps. According to Joseph Siri, arc lamps were a strong electric current bridging carbon poles that created a luminous arc through a chamber of air enclosed in glass. Also, an important fact that many don't know was that also on the windows there were frames of iron that provided a decorative art. Those outside of the building weren't able to see it. So, to see the ornamental frame, you had to be inside the upper level, looking outside of the window while shopping. According to Joseph Siri, the destruction of the old Slicinger and Mayer store began in the year 1903. The steel frame for the new section was erected by the end of July and the other walls were completed from sidewalk to corners by late August. The entire building was completed during the week of October 10th, 1903. This was the time the autumn shopping season was about to begin. The opening did bring stress to the building, but also to the financial condition of the building. The cost of the new building was supposed to cost about $1 million. Unfortunately, by the time the building was finished in 1903, it had totaled to $1,615,000 with additional interior work that had yet still to be completed. In the summer of 1904, Carson Perry Scott 
heard about the financial struggles of the building and offered to buy the building and make it his own. This is how the name of the building occurred. Scott later turned over the store building to its new occupants and had done so just in time before the commencement of the fall shopping season of 1904. Carson Peary Scott's building choice was the best choice he had made after debating on which new location his store would have been located at. Carson Peary Scott wrote about Sullivan's work. The high taste and skill of Mr. Sullivan, its architect, are well expressed in the beautiful design and general style of this structure, and our occupancy of it for these two years enables us to form an intelligent judgment upon its excellence as a structure as well as its adaptation for retail mercantile purposes. No more beautiful corner entrance of its kind is, so far as we know, in existence in this country, and the whole is a fine illustration of what Mr. Sullivan can design in the way of a retail business building. We learn from Messrs. Slicinger and Mayer that their transactions with Mr. Sullivan were perfectly satisfactory and gladly add our words of approval to his skill and success as an architect. Sullivan designed the corner entrance of the building so it can be seen from State and Madison Street. The idea was so that the entrance would grab the attention of those from away and it made the building look elegant and attractive, competing with the next door stores. One thing that really stood out was learning that Louis Sullivan had his initials engraved in his artwork that not many people see hidden inside. If one were to look carefully on top of the main entrance door, you can see the initials of Sullivan's name hidden in his artwork. A major thing that I learned was how Sullivan got the exact color he wanted for the building. When the building was first painted, it was painted into a vermilion color, which is a type of red-orange color. When it was done, workers painted the iron of the building into a bright red and let the color dry out for about three days until they applied the olive green color and used newspaper pieces to create the new and unique look that is seen today. When one was to look inside, you see that iron was also used to make the heaters that are near the entrance doors. These heaters were also designed with his unique and antique idea. Although they were not painted with the olive green color, they were still made with the same medium. A major thing that Sullivan added to the redesign of the building was that he had made his art fireproof. The reason was that after following the famous Chicago fire, he wanted to make sure that his artwork was safe in case any related incident were to occur in the future. For my art, I decided to take a picture of the Carson Peary Scott building in today's time. Many of you may now know that it is now a Target store. I provide my own pictures that I took myself of every single detail in Sullivan's design. One of the surprising things I saw was how everything that I had read and learned about the building was still the same. I was able to see the olive green color on the iron and saw how the ornaments appeared to look like flowers. I went inside and saw how every single detail of the design from inside was able to be seen from the enormous windows. I saw how once someone walks in the entrance, you can feel the heat coming out of the heaters that up to this day remain the same color and are made from the same iron that Sullivan designed. When I looked up, I saw how Sullivan added his ornament design to the top of the wood poles that hold up the main entrance of the building. I also had the chance to see how Sullivan's initials are hidden in his artwork on top of the front entrance doors. Overall, it was really fascinating seeing how Sullivan's artwork remains the same after all these years and how it still brings attention to tourists and Chicago residents that come into the store that once was the Carson Peary Scott building. I had lived in Chicago all my life and had passed by this building many times just thinking it was a regular Target store, but bigger. I never would have imagined the history behind this building.